brothers and sisters, uh, we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, we hope everyone uh, is doing well, and we trust that the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ uh, is guarding our hearts uh, in uh, whatever circumstances uh, that we are in uh, every day. Uh, today, uh, we praise God, and we give God thanks uh, for today. Uh, in this uh, church service, we welcome you all, uh, you who is watching, uh, welcome, and uh, it is a, a joy to uh, be here to share the word of God and to speak the words uh, of God that bring uh, encouragement uh, to us uh, on our journey uh, to uh, as we serve the Lord uh, here uh, where we are. Today, I'm reading the service. And uh, we, the preacher of today is Ezekiel Sinhirenganya. Uh, he will share the word of God uh, with us. Uh, but uh, let us uh, start this service uh, with a prayer, and we will continue to worship uh, our God. Uh, reading Psalm uh, 19, uh, we read from uh, verse 9 uh, to verse 14. Uh, let us uh, pray first. Dear Lord, we give you praises, we give you uh, thanks, and our hearts are full of gratitude uh, to you, O oh Lord. We thank you for this opportunity uh, to share your word. We thank you for everything. We thank you that we can still hear your word. We thank you that we can uh, uh, still serve you. Lord, continue to enable us and continue to lead us. Lord, we welcome you in this service. We pray that you use us for your glory and that you will accomplish your purpose using us, O oh Lord. Be with us in everything. We give you glory and praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, let us uh, go and on and uh, read uh, Psalm 19 uh, from verse uh, 9 as uh, we worship uh, uh, the Lord. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinance of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. They are more precious than gold, than uh, much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, and honey from the comb. But uh, they, by, by, by them, in, by, uh, by them in your servant, by them, is your servant warned in the keeping them uh, there is a great reward. Who can discern, discern his errors? Forgive my for, uh, hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then will I be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Uh, the words of the Lord indeed are precious. They are more precious than anything, and they bring life. They bring life to us. The words of the Lord uh, bring life. Our Lord is amazing, and he's worthy to be praised. Uh, let us uh, pray uh, once more before uh, the preacher comes to share the word of God. And, uh, but before we pray, we will read uh, God's law. And of course, we will pray a uh, prayer of confession. Uh, we will pray for children and we will pray for Ezekiel uh, as he comes to share the word of God with us. Uh, so God's law is uh, from... Uh, uh, Joel, Joel chapter 2, uh, verse uh, 12 uh, to 14. Uh, only three verses. We may read attentively. Uh, Joel um, chapter 2, uh, verse 12 to 14. Uh, you may stand where you are uh, so that we can read uh, God's law uh, attentively. Joel uh, chapter 2, from verse 12 to 14. The word of God says, 
Even now, declares the Lord, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is right, gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows, he may turn and have pity and leave behind a blessing, rain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. This is uh, the law uh, of God uh, that is calling us uh, to repent, to turn back to him. And he is always ready to forgive us and to welcome us. His arms are ever open uh, to whoever is willing to come uh, to him. Uh, let us uh, pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are gracious. We thank you that uh, you never send back anyone who comes to you, but you welcome us always. Lord, we give you praises. And Lord, uh, we come with repentant hearts, Lord. Lord, we have not have willing hearts that uh, come to you and seek you and hunger for you. Lord, we have kept uh, running away from you and to find our own ways to be lost in our sins and to do things that are detestable and to not bring you glory. Lord, we are sorry. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Transform our hearts, Lord. Lead us back to you. O oh Lord, may this word uh, call us back and may your Holy Spirit come and transform our hearts and give us willing hearts to come to you, Lord, to hunger for you and to uh, have you in our hearts to lead us to do what is good, uh, to do uh, what you desire us to do. Lord, uh, we give you praises and honor. Lord, we pray for children that you also work uh, with them and work in them and that you accomplish your purpose, Lord, of which you created them for. Each of them before they were born, you knew them and you have a purpose for each of them. And Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will work in them and that your mighty hand will be around them to bring everything to, uh, uh, to fulfillment, Lord. Lord, you are mighty and Lord, your hand uh, can do everything more than we can ever imagine. And Lord, we pray that children will also bring you glory and that you provide for them good environment to grow and accomplish your purpose, Lord. Uh, Lord, uh, help us uh, to be good examples to them and to show love to them because when we don't obey you, Lord, we um, fall short uh, from what you call us to do. Uh, Lord, help us to obey you. We pray for the preacher. We pray that you speak through him and that we uh, listen attentively and that your word will bring us transformation and that your word will give us new insights and that your word will lead our feet and our hands to go and serve you with joyful hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God, brothers and sisters. I thank God again for this time to share the word of God. And uh, I thank God for his protection over me. And uh, you also, I think you are fine. And uh, praise the Lord together with me. Uh, today, uh, we are going again to share the word of God from uh, Psalm, Psalm uh, 51. Psalm 51. We'll be reading verse uh, 1 to 7. Psalm 51, verse 1 to, to 7, we will be talking about the true repentance. True repentance. Praise the Lord. Let's read the word of God. Uh, have mercy on me, O God, because of your 
unfailing love, because of your great compassion, brought out the stain of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt, purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion, it haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. Will be proved delight in what you say, and your judgment against me is just. For I was born a, I was born a sinner, yes, from the moment my mother conceived me. But you desire honest from the womb, teaching me wisdom even there. Purify me from my sins, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. This is the word of God. And uh, I thank God that he has inspired the writers, the authors of this word of God, to write it so that may teach us today. The last time we were talking about we're talking about uh, the golden rule. And we have seen how much we are weak. We are humans. We are humans and we are weak. And with uh, our selfish nature, we always sin against God. And we have shortcomings in our everyday life. That's why it's good as Christians, as we know that God has called us, that he has called us to be holy. And uh, the, our relationship with God is, is broken by sin. We may look back into Genesis when Adam and Eve sinned against God. The sin that they committed is disobedience. The dis disobedience is the sin that they committed when they ate on the tree that was forbidden. And uh, the consequences of the sin are many, and uh, we, always, we always experience those consequences in our day, uh, everyday life. Even in what we see in this world, there are uh, different uh, bad things that we experience in our lives caused by our choices and, uh, and sins. But God is always merciful. He's always merciful. He's always gracious. He's always loving. Even we can go away from him, even when we sin uh, against him, he continues to love us, the unconditional love. That's why we would like to think about how, how as Christians, as a, a reminder, this is a reminder on how Christians should behave when they sin. And that's why we are talking about Repentance and the, the true the true one, true repentance. How we come back to God when we sin against Him? Because we are we are very weak. I remember Paul was saying that he will he will recognize, he will accept his weaknesses because where he's weak, it's where the the the, the strength uh of God will come and fear. And when the strength of God comes and fear our weaknesses, we are stronger. We are more than conquerors. We triumph the, uh, the sin. Even if Satan has not power on us, he has not power on us because we are together with God, uh, because we are united with him in repentance through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, as we were reading, Psalm uh, 51 is talking about David. 
this is what David said when uh, in the time when Nathan, the prophet Nathan, came to him after uh, David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. You may remember the story is in, in the book of Samuel. In the book of Samuel, uh, the, the second book of Samuel, chapter 12, you can read that story when uh, David saw, uh, saw Bathsheba when he, she was, uh, he was showering. Then he, he, he won't sleep with her and he did uh, he committed the adultery and then uh, after committing adultery he even took the wife of uh, his uh, servant and even he killed his husband her husband then after that the prophet Nathan came to him and told him a story of one rich man and a, a poor man. Uh, the rich man had uh, visitors in his home, and uh, he want some. Uh, he want to have something to uh, to give to his visitors at home. Uh, then he went to the poor man to ask him the uh, the sheep he had. He had the on the only sheep. And he want to have that sheep so that he 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 give it to uh, he kill it and he give it to cook it for uh, his visitors. That's what happened. Uh, that the story, the story was relating how David, who was a king, went to take the wife of his servant and made her his wife. Those, uh, when those words came in the ears of David, he said that that person, that rich man who went to take the ownership of the, the poor man should be punished. He must not be forgiven. Remember that when, when, the time when we were talking about the when we were talking about the, the golden rule, we were saying that we need to do to others what we would like them to do to us. We sometimes find the sins of others are very, very bad and very serious, but our sins, we find them very easy to forgive. David wanted to punish that man the, the rich man who took the ship of all, the poor man. But he didn't know, he didn't recognize that the story is talking about him. But when Nathan, the prophet Nathan told him that he's the one, he this, that man who took what is uh, for the poor man is him, he started to repent. He started to express his uh, humbleness to God and said the words that we were reading. He said to God, have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love, because of your great compassion brought out the stain of my sin. He, need, he found that he needed to repent. People uh, the people react differently in front of sin. They react differently. Some people recognize their sins or their mistakes, but others even say that they did nothing. We can remember uh, the story of Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel uh, in, uh, in Genesis, you remember that those were uh, the sons to, sons to Adam and Eve, and Cain killed his brother Abel. 
when he killed him, God came to him and asked, that is in Genesis chapter 4, uh, on verse 9, it says, uh, afterward, the Lord asked Cain, where's your brother? Where's Abel? I don't, uh, Cain answered, I don't know. It's what he, he responded. Am I my brother's guardian? This is what he's asking. He's saying that he's not the, the guardian for his brother. And uh, God was asking him where he is. Actually, God knew where Abel was, but he needed to listen from Cain that he expressed, he shows, he recognized his sin and repent. But he didn't. Remember the time when uh, Adam and Eve committed the sin, when God came to them, they tried to hide, but God found them because we can't hide from God. And uh, when he found them, he asked them what they did. And uh, Adam said, the wife you have given me. It's like God is becoming the one who, who caused Adam to sin because he gave him a wife. And uh, when they asked the wife, she said, the serpent, the serpent, the snake deceived me. And so on. No one wanted to no one wanted to, to repent directly, to ask for forgiveness, but they tried to, to, to find the, the, the reason, the reason why they sinned. But as Christians, we should know, uh, we should recognize our sins and repent. Because the problem is not, sin, uh, is not the sin, but the problem is how we repent. That's why I want that we speak, we talk, we think about, we meditate about the true repentance. We are weak. We are not uh, angels. We are, we are still in the world. We are tempted. We are always in trials. And those trials always lead us to, to sin. That's why we need to recognize our weaknesses so that we accept the love, the unconditional love of God that he has, he has given us freely. He has given us the, the love. He has loved us unconditionally. And uh, we need always, always think about his graciousness so that we come to him. We come to him with our uh, recognizing how we are weak. Then, he is ready to forgive us. Hallelujah. He is always ready to forgive us, to forgive our sins, and give us his Holy Spirit to enable us to, to fight against sin. I remember James was saying that we need to fight Satan and he will go away from us, and we need to come closer to God and he will or come closer to us too. Let, let us now uh, see the steps we need to make in order to repent. Remember, we are talking about the true repentance. First of all, a true, uh, uh, a true repentance has a true sense of one's own guilt and sinfulness. You need to recognize that you are a sinner. You need to recognize that you have sinned. Then, the second thing, the second step, is to appreciate God's mercy in Christ. Appreciate God's mercy in Christ. First of all, recognize your guilt and sinfulness. Then, Appreciate God's mercy in Christ. Third, 
you need to hate the sin. From that, you need to hate sin. You need to hate sin. The fourth step is uh, to always look after a holy whole life in a walk with God in the way of his commandment. Try to fight. Try to fight. Try to, 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 to be courageous in whatever you do so that you show yourself as holy in front of God. You live a holy life walking with God in his commandments. Try to do that. The four steps, I repeat them, that lead to the true repentance. You need to recognize your guilty and sinfulness. The second one, you need to appreciate God's mercy in Christ. Because we are, we are forgiven through Christ who died and rose again from the dead to reconcile us to the Lord. We need, after that, we need to, uh, uh, to, to have actual hatred of sin. Because if we continue in sins, if we repent and go back to sins, that's wrong. It's not a true repentance. We need always fight against sin to show us holy, to live a holy life, walking in the way of the commandments of the Lord. The fifth thing we need to do is that uh, what will show that you, you repented is that you change. You need to change. Repentance means change. You don't remain the same. There are people who say that they repented, but they remain the same. Even they can repent in the church, and after church, they are the same. They can repent this time, this hour, this minute, and after that, they are the same. They, they go back to in what they were doing. Repentance means change, and the, the change of mind, the change of mind, you need to change the mind. When you read uh, verse 3 of, of, of Psalm 51, it says, For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. He, David was recognizing his rebellion. And he's recognizing that he, he sinned against God. Then, the Repentance should bring change of mind. Again, repentance brings change of emotions. And repentance brings change of direction. Maybe someone was in adultery, in adultery. When he's, he repents, he needs to to change the direction, the direction that leads to adultery. Whatever, whatever situation or whatever place we, that may lead you to adultery, you need to change that direction. When you repent, you need to change direction. In the ways you were going through need to be changed. It's what uh, an evangelist called Billy Graham, said, uh, talked about the new, uh, the new birth, that we need to change the way. It, uh, he was saying that it, it's like one was uh, walking, uh, has done a journey of like 100 meters, and he finds he's in a wrong direction. Then he, turn, he turns back and change the direction, go in, under, uh, uh, in the, the right way. The right direction. Repentance brings change of direction, brings change of emotions, and brings also change of mind. For example, someone is a, is a big liar. 
There are people who lie. Every day, every, in whatever situation, they lie. Even, even when it's not necessary. Because it became their culture. But when you, you, you repent about lying, you need to change. To change the mind. To change your direction. There is a true repentance when we change our minds, our emotions, our direction, the way we're doing things. This true repentance will bring the reconciliation between us and God, and also will bring reconciliation between us and our other humans, our brothers and sisters, and uh, our fellow. It will bring harmony in our life. It will bring love. Because there are many sins that lead to separation, dispute. But when we repent, we live a holy life worth a Christian. We need to bring to have a true repentance so that we live in harmony with others, but also with God. I ask you, brothers and sisters, to think about how you repent. Think about how you live, and whenever, whenever you fall into temptation and sin, come back to God. He is always ready to welcome you with his love, with him, uh, his unconditional love. He never look at how many times you, you sin, but he's always ready to welcome you. Thanks for listening and for following this sermon. And uh, I pray, God, that you, you put into practice these steps of, uh, of the true repentance, recognizing that you are a sinner, and uh, acknowledging, recognizing that God is always merciful, and he was always ready to welcome you in his presence and forgive you. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you that you love us in unconditional love. And uh, we thank you that you are, you are always ready to welcome us as we sin against you and against our brothers and sisters. Lord, we ask you to give us your Holy Spirit so that he enable us to, uh, to be holy in your presence and uh, live in harmony with others and you yourself. Lord, we are weak, but we are, you are strong. We need your strength so that we may live a holy life as Christians, so that we display in this world how much a Christian should look like. Lord, we ask you your blessings and your, your mercy and your forgiveness to whoever need it from you, Lord. I thank you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Uh, we thank you. Uh, we thank Ezekiel very much for sharing the word of God with us. And uh, we give you, we give God the glory. And uh, we uh, thank God for his servants and for the word of God that we see here uh, today. Before we end the service, uh, you may stand and uh, let us uh, affirm our faith and also uh, pray our Lord's Prayer. Uh, let us affirm our faith first. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Hence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, uh, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Uh, let us uh, continue. Uh, to pray uh, our Lord's uh, prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May you go in peace, in service to the Lord. May the repentance that the Lord Jesus Christ has brought to our hearts bring him glory in uh, what he enables us to do each and every day. Amen. <laughs>